All right, welcome back to the shop. Today's project is a little candle stand uh, made out of mahogany. I got three pieces here. I got one piece for the top, which is about an inch and a seven eighths inch thick or so. I had to glue up a couple of boards to get it to come out to the right thickness. And I got another piece here for the base, which is cut from the same board. So that's about a little bit smaller in diameter, but the same part piece anyway. Uh, and I also have a little piece for the spindle, which is uh, about an inch and seven eighths square by about three inches long. So should be a fun project. So let's go ahead and mount the uh, top up on the lathe and get turning. All right, just when I think I got this whole lighting thing and everything figured out, it happens to get nice outside. I open up the garage door and it throws me all out of whack again. So I guess for the summer, I'm going to have to keep experimenting until I get the lighting thing figured out. So hopefully you can see what we're doing. Um, what it is, I took our top piece, uh, which needs to be turned down to four and a quarter inch uh, diameter. It's a little bigger than that now. I got some double stick tape, um, which is attaching it to a piece of MDF, which is glued to a waste block back here on the side. And it's being held in my four jaw chuck. So I know you can't see all that. This uh, piece of MDF is a little bit bigger than I need it to be. I use it for another project, so it's kind of in the way. I don't have a short tool rest, which is on my short list of things to get. So what we're going to do is I got my tool rest as close as I can get it. I got my caliper set for four and a quarter inches, so we're going to go ahead and start turning this down. I got the tailstock holding on there till we get ready to uh, uh, start working on the face, and once we start doing that, then I'll move the tailstock out of the way and we can we can continue on. So let's get going. I got the speed set on the lathe about a thousand RPM, so maybe a little bit less than that. We'll move it up just a little bit. We'll take our parting tool and just get this down to the diameter that we want. exactly this is close not exact but it's close enough so we just needed it to be a little bit less now we need to mark a a um, circle on the end of here well, about three and seven sixteenths or three and something like that on the end there hollow that out a little bit and that's where the candle will actually set once it's a uh, um, when you put a candle on it so let's get the tail stack out of the way and in uh Get reset up for a next cut. All right, I moved the tailstock out of the way, and I got the tool rests on this side. I got a set. It's a pair of dividers I got set at about three and three sixteen, three and a quarter. Uh, set so that the the point is right on the center line. What we're going to do is we're going to make a circle on this thing, so we want it to be centered. So the trick to doing that is is you touch the left hand side and start to make a mark, and when the mark when this side fits into that same mark that you're making, then you know that you're centered. So let's go ahead and turn the lathe on and make sure we're, see if we can get some uh, good idea to get it close. So if I push the left side in and make a mark, you can see I'm way, hopefully you can see I'm way off. I need to move over a little bit, a little bit more. All right, so right there, I push in on this side, that side fits in the mark, so we know that we're 
we know that we're centered, so we got our circle. Right. Maybe I'll uh, mark it with a pencil. You can see it a little bit, maybe. There we go. All right, so now what we're going to do is we'll move our tailstock back just a little bit. Now we want to hollow this out inside that mark there, so we're going to use a little square nose scraper that I've ground to a little different kind of grind. This this particular part here does, is not um, square to this edge, but this part right here is a 90 degree angle. So when I go into the thing, I can use it to clean up side of boxes and things like that. It works out pretty handy so you can get it so that it's... Uh, uh, you clean up the, so you can cut on this side. You can also cut on the, the top there. So, um, so now that we have that on set where we want it, we'll move this light a little bit and we'll start hollowing that out. We want to go a little bit more than a quarter of an inch deep. Um, so let's see how we do. We're starting to, starting to center here so we can get this light to cooperate with it. All right, yeah, probably a little too high. Let's see, we'll start hollowing this out here. You just work your way out to the line. Not an exact science, but as long as it's close, we're good. Said we want to get to be a about a quarter of an inch deep, so we need to get this thing out of my way. It's starting to really bug me. Alright, let's try again. Uh, push too hard, we gotta remember we're only being held onto the piece of MDF by some double stick tape, so. cleaned up the best we can. Save on the sanding. Alright, so we're just a tad over, maybe a 32nd over a quarter of an inch. So we're going to call that good. So, next thing we need to do now is this, this side pretty much done. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take it off and turn it around, put it in the chuck. Um, and then we can start shaping the bottom part of it and, and actually uh, use something other than a scraper and a parting tool. So let's get that set up and we'll see what we can do. Okay, I've gone ahead and parted this, this piece down to a one and a quarter inch thick. I said it was thicker than it needed to be, so I, I went ahead and parted that down. I parted it as far as I could, then I went ahead and... and uh, cut it off with a saw, cleaned it up a little bit. We're going to turn most of this away anyway. So what we want is a little curve at the top and then kind of swoop down to a, a, a piece that's about oh, about an inch thick or so down in, down in here. So that way uh, we can drill a hole for our tenon on our spindle. So let's go ahead and start shaping it. Right. Right. Cool rest a little bit higher. Just using a uh, spindle gouge for this. Well, 
Before we go too far, let's get our uh, let's get a mark on the bottom of our little uh, a little bit of tear out on the back side there that we'll we'll sand off. Let's get a little bit of a mark on this thing. We can we used our dividers last time, but this time we can just go ahead and use our ruler. We can see that the center is right about there. So if we just put our edge of our ruler on the center and go out about, you know, we're about, we want a little over a half, a little under a half an inch. So we'll, we'll go with a half an inch. That should give us a one inch circle. Not exactly, so we'll go a little bit more. There, that gives us a one inch circle. So now I don't want to use the inside line. I don't know if I can erase that or not. Nope. Okay. Move our tool rest back and finish shaping up the little bottom part here. that shape so we got that uh, turned down what we want uh, next thing we do is we drill a half inch hole in the end here um, I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off because I'm going to sand this up uh, and drill that hole and then we'll we'll come back and we'll work on the uh, the bottom piece and then turn the spindle and we'll be good to go okay I've taken and uh, mounted the, the bottom piece on the lathe here made it round. It was a little bit off center when I put it on there, but there was some extra wood, so that's all right. Uh, I've went and marked the depth. This piece is only about five-eighths of an inch or so. I uh, drilled a five-eighths inch hole for our tenon. Um, all that you've seen me kind of do before, so what we're going to do is we're going to start shaping this. It's going to kind of have a little, you know, kind of a little trough there, and then kind of come up to this, and we'll see how we can... Uh, Let's see what we can make it look like. I'm going to start with my, uh, I think I'll move my tool rest around. We'll start with the spindle gouge and we'll, we'll shape the outside of this piece a little bit and see what we can come up with. Like I said, this is not a, um, this is not an exact science, so if, uh, if we, we just kind of make the shape up as we go along here. So we'll see what we can do. Give a little bit of speed. I want this part to come down a little bit. I think I'll part that in there. I'll take my small parting tool and part down in where the... Uh, again, we're only holding this on with tape, so we have to be a little bit careful. Here. All right. Find that a little bit. Let's go ahead and I'll take this back down a little bit. do I want the base to be just smaller than the uh, the top part here so let's move this around this way and see I think I'll take my small parting tool maybe come over three eighths of an inch or so and oops, not that and my pencil and my ruler Come in three eighths of an inch from the edge. And then 
make a mark right about there. I want to go ahead and part in there and make a little bit of a shoulder. start hollowing some of this out right here in this center section. this up and shut it off to see what we can see. Okay, what I wanted was this outside edge lower than the center, which I think we finally got. Uh, I wanted a little bit of a trough there to just for some decoration with a little ledge and then a, a bead on the outside edge. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see with the, with the light the way it is, but um, we have a little bit of a... We have a little bit of a ledge right here. And then we have a bead that goes around like this. I think then I'll. Uh, I'm thinking that I'll pretty much call that good and touch it up with some sandpaper, and then we'll be good to go. So when I come back, uh, I'll probably go ahead and part it off um, as kind of a uh, not a whole lot of fun to watch. So I'll probably just go ahead and part it off, and then when you come back, we'll have that uh, piece done, and then we'll we'll be ready to turn the little spindle. All right, we got our little spindle piece chucked up between centers, and, or uh, held between centers. So let's go ahead and make this thing round, and then we'll start putting some uh, marks on it and some dimensions. So. <laughs> round when you put your tool on it and it doesn't vibrate. The sewing's got a little knock in there. So. You put it on there now, it gets nice and smooth, so it should be round. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of flat right there, but it's still up. Alright, we need to leave it a little bit for the drive side. And this Tendon on this end is about three eighths of an inch long, so if we make the tendon about there, and then we need an inch and three quarters for the spindle, and then on this end we need about a, oh, let's see, a three eighths, maybe a, we'll make it another three eighths inch tendon about. Okay. All right, so what we have is we have a, a tenon on each end, a little bit of waist, some waist, a tenon on this end, so we got this little part in the middle. And a little part in the middle needs to be about uh, one and three-eighths inches in diameter, so let's get our calipers and set them for one and three-eighths inches. That's 
grazie. Hopefully we're not there yet. I know we're not. We'll take our parting tool and go down to one and three eighths inches on that. If I can find it here. I don't know how it can get away from me. It's right there on that thing there. So, all right. Move the two rests in a little bit. And part this center part down to one and three eighths inches. top part here this is going to be the one that goes into the top so we need a little I'm going to put a little bit of a bead on there so yeah, might as well get rid of this too that was in the way there we go This, uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a bead on top here that maybe is, uh, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch or so. Let's get it 3 sixteenths. A bead there. And then we want the high part of the... Little spindle to be right there, and about an inch or so down, we want the lowest part. Alright, so let's see what we can do. My spindle go. So, what we're going to do is we want to we want to shape this down.
bit of a transition there, round this off just a little bit more if you can. All right, let's see what we got. All right, I decided uh, after I looking at it that this part down here was was too big, so I turned it down a little bit, um, made it more proportional to the top. I also sanded through 220. I think that's all I need to do for this. And generally, um, what I like to do is wipe the piece down with a piece of with some uh, mineral spirits. It does two things: it cleans the sawdust off, and two, it shows me if I got any uh, areas that didn't quite get clean. So um, let's go ahead and. Plus, it also gives me a little bit of idea what the wood's going to look like when I uh, when I do put a finish on it. So you can see that that's uh, going to be a nice looking piece of mahogany and because they're all all the pieces were cut from the same board um, you're going to have color mats through the through the three because I'm not going to put any um, finish I'm just going to top coat it with some uh, uh, wood turners finish which I'll show here in a minute so I have the tendons cut down this is a half an inch on the top this is a uh, five eighths on the bottom I'm going to go ahead and part those off um, either some I might saw them off with a saw just so I can um, get a nice clean cut and then we'll go ahead and put the three pieces together and see what it looks like. Alright, well here's our finished project. Our little uh, candle stand made out of mahogany. Uh, I've got it glued together. I had to do a little bit of fitting on the tenons to get them to go into the holes correct, but I think it'd be nice for a uh, a candle that's in a glass jar or whatever you can set on the top or a short pillar candle of some sort. Um, doesn't have any finish on it yet so it's uh, uh, gonna need to have that done to it. The finish I'll use is this wood turner's finish with general uh, finishes. Um, I've used it before it works it works pretty good. Uh, it's a waterborne finish so um, it does raise the grain of the wood a little bit but that's not a problem. I'll, I'll put a couple of coats on and hit it with some 320 and I'll knock those down. I'll put a couple more coats on and, and um, that'll take care of it. Uh, makes a nice finish, a nice hard finish. Um, good news about it is it dries very fast so you can put like several coats on in one day. So that, I'll put that to the next projects. So here we go is our little uh, candle stand. I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching the video as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you're so inclined, please uh, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.